Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Gift. Thank you, Jeff, for that wonderful lineup. As you can see, we're busting out of Sundays. So stay tuned in the next few weeks for that. Um, this morning, though, I wanted to share with you a bit more about two of our events coming up. And I think you saw episode three. We're calling it Perfectly Still. That came into my mind because one of the first things I'd like to share with you about is the sound of silence. And again, as Jeff mentioned, we've got Jackie, Suzanne, and Michael joining us for the monastery. And it feels like it's going to be a really packed show, actually, because we're also going to share with you about the other, um, the other really beautiful event coming up, too, called the Inside Passage Home, uh, which they're also a part of, Jackie and Suzanne. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my guests up at the monastery. Welcome, Jackie, Suzanne, Michael. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> we love the name of your show today. Perfectly, Perfectly still. still. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, yeah, as I said, we're going to be talking about two of our events today, but more than that, just as we were talking about this throughout the week and feeling like this was for us this week, the four of us, Jackie, you'd shared some inspirations about um, particularly around the purpose and the benefits of silence. Before we launch into that, though, as I was praying this morning into the show, I had the lines that are on our event page coming to my mind. So I want to share those with you. And as well, Jackie had put out a post the other day about like the beauty of journaling. So I've got my journal here to share with you guys, not to share from it. <laughs> would be another show. But um, I wanted to share this quote from our event page. It's a nice segue into things. So, inside the silence of your heart, there is an open doorway. As we slip through this doorway, from our unending thoughts and distractions of the world, we enter into a fresh new reality. This new reality emerges during time devoted to deep contemplation, meditation, and rest. So you guys wrote that. And I would, I would love to hear uh, so much about, about um, the purpose of meditation and silence through this whole process of awakening, that is, and the benefits as well, just really what starts to emerge in your heart as you devote more time to this? Um, I feel so touched just by your words and and silence for me has been a huge game changer on the spiritual journey. And this morning, while I was in prayer and meditation, I kept hearing about this, the title that we've been given, The Sound of Silence. And what does that even really mean? And the sound of silence to me is opening up to a new type of hearing. It's not really about hearing with the ears. We do that in our world every day. In fact, we're bombarding, we're, we're bombarded constantly with noise of the world. And so this sound of silence is really listening with an inner ear of, for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. What is it that they're going to hear? And for me, when I opened up to this realm, all of the work that I had done previously, the forgiveness work, the studying of the Course of Miracles mainly, I started to open up to this inner listening. And of course, all the teachings take us to that. They take us into this inner realm of love, really. It's a love affair. And I feel such gratitude for that opening because without that opening, there's still so much of the mind that's caught in the concept of silence. And that's really not what this retreat is about. This retreat is really about coming into awareness of that inner stillness, that inner sanctuary, 
And to be able to drop deeply into that is where all the things that we've wanted from whether it's worldly endeavors or spiritual endeavors lies. And that's where all the spiritual traditions point to. It doesn't matter which one it is. It's going to, at a certain point, turn around and face you towards that inner sanctuary, that inner knowing, that inner landscape that can't be touched by the world. And so for me, I just, I can't, I can't share enough about the beauty of taking time. And whether you come to this retreat or not, it's really just opening up to spending more time in quiet. And you know, when people get here to the monastery, they have an idea about silence. And that usually gets shattered pretty quickly because there's a romanticism about it. But what actually seems to happen is that things start to come up. There's no distractions anymore. I'm left with myself. What does this mean? So I watch people and it takes a few days for them to settle down. It's kind of like they're looking at you like, oh, can we engage? And we just, we just quietly walk by. Namaste. <laughs> so I feel like the opportunity to come together in this way is to simply fall back into the love of God, to simply sink back behind the chatter of the mind. But the chatter of the mind has to be dealt with. And so there's a supportive, a supportive team here that will, that will support that dropping because it is a process. Like any retreat you go to, it is a process. And the mind takes a while to settle. It's almost like detoxing from all your devices, from all, all the things of the world that are constantly moving towards you. That's why we set it up so that you're pretty free from those attachments and things when you come in. There won't be any cell phones. There won't be any tablets. There won't be any computers. So we start to just do the detox and we're going to be sending out something to the people that are coming to kind of prepare them to start to come into this. And although this isn't a teaching retreat, it is going to be a guided, somewhat guided retreat for those who feel they need it. Because some will come that have a spiritual practice and they just are so appreciative of the space to be able to do their spiritual practice, whatever that is. And then others who need maybe a little bit more structure, then we'll have that available too. But to me, silence is, is reaching down deep beneath the distractions of the mind and falling into that pool of, of stillness. And it's, it's the most rich experience. It's what everything is pointing to. So I just, you know, wholeheartedly invite anybody. And even if you can't come to the retreat and like your, the name of your show is The Gift, may the gift from us today be silence, like to take the time and to be quiet, to really truly allow that kind of rough edge of the constant monkey mind to settle down and take some time and just be with yourself and see that that's where all the, the goodness lies because underneath all that is the absolute truth of who we are and it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. So, yeah, to talk about the the retreat structure a little bit too, that's what's going to be supported um, so that there'll be a theme for the first week of mind watching. Mm -hmm. um, and we've all walked that to come into true stillness. So it starts with silence, what we call silence, no words, no contact, no communications other than than really going deeply within for all communication um, and then being supported to see what comes up in the mind. It, it's, um, hmm. I like pictures. So, so what, what's coming to me is like a dance. It's, um, it's a, a dance that seems to be at first, when you first start to, to get really quiet, it's like you, you start to um, waltz with your breath, say, and you start to watch the breath, or there's some sort of technique there that, that, that helps you 
to actually focus here, right here, right now. Um, and then, the, like you say, the monkey mind will come up. Mm -hmm. And so you do a bit of a rock and roll with the monkey mind mm -hmm. in the dance. And, um, and then maybe you've got a mantra and the mantra helps for a while and then maybe it starts to sound a bit like a rap. You know, <laughs> you, you're clinging to it somehow. And so all, the, all those things really, you, you can watch the progression of, of how all this stuff, after three or four days, you find, you start to see that you're actually efforting at something that needs no effort. Mm -hmm. You know, like we do breathe. We don't even have to think about it. And, and we do dance in the divine. We don't even have to concentrate on it. And, and it's like that progress through walking out of the dance hall and away from the dance and just watching is, is actually the next stage. It's like we then go to the, to the point of being the observer and still that's an engagement because we're looking on something. And so when we come to true stillness, it's like we, we look on the world, but then suddenly there, there's a, a moment where true inner stillness takes place and there's a turn mm -hmm. which seems to turn away altogether and face God, face the light. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is then entering the true divine, the, the experience of the true self, mm -hmm. that, that true unspeakable stillness that is available to us. But like you say, it seems to be a journey. It seems to be a process. And, and that's really what we want to support mm -hmm. over the period of, of people, people who actually come to, to go there mm -hmm. with that intention mm -hmm. mm. to yeah. overcome the fear of it. Yeah to, yeah. to come out of the conceptual realm. The conceptual realm is important for a while, the learning, but at a certain point, like you mm. said, it's like a turn. Yeah. And when you make that turn, there's just this utter amazement of what actually is there mm. in a very peaceful way. Not a lot of bells and whistles, but just like, oh, okay. So we feel like this offering of this retreat is really such a gift to the mind, an essential gift that sometimes is overlooked sometimes overlooked because the mind training is important. It's absolutely essential. I mean, true stillness is simply the forgiven mind. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through the processes of forgiveness and mind training. And, and that's all such an essential part. If your path is a course of miracles, it's, it's given. Jesus gets us a little handbook on how to do this. And then in those last lessons, he starts talking about, you know, going deeper inward. And, and more into the stillness and the silence. And then you take that with you. You see the words really aren't necessary in so, so much of the time. Mm -hmm. And then your words become a blessing. Isn't that beautiful? Like only use your words to bless and uplift. I mean, and the rest of the time you don't have to say anything. <laughs> it's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I was reading an article um, just as I was preparing my mind for this over the last few days and it talked about the purpose and benefits of silence and, and it shared things like what you just said, Suzanne, like, you know, you, you speak less. You get to see that most of what you speak is actually unnecessary and then your words become a blessing and a number of other benefits for living your life. But I really just love how you guys brought it from the bottom up, you brought it, you really brought it home. It's not about living a better life. It's about that final turn. So, yeah, I feel really grateful actually that it, it can, I feel really grateful for your sharing. That's really what it is for. It's not for um, anything less than union. So. Yeah. Divine union. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're all about. <laughs> yeah. The dance and the divine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The time for the little master. 
<laughs> it's funny talking about silence, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it, actually. I, it's like getting excited about something that is so still. It's like, in a way, it feels so counterintuitive, but um, it's not. Like, yeah. it feels very, very exciting. Yeah. It's very rich. It's mm -hmm. a very rich experience. It's not... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, yeah, okay. what can I say? It's, it's almost tactile, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a, it, like I said, yeah. it's a different kind of hearing. It's a different kind of experience. And, and it's a beautiful experience that goes with you wherever you go. I mean, that's the practice, isn't mm -hmm. it, to fall into it so deeply that you really don't come out of it. And when you come out of it uh, and, and you notice that perhaps you're tempted to sleep in the dream world and, and be a human on planet Earth, then you, you just bring it back, gently bring it back, like, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So it becomes more attractive than, than the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't mean that you're sitting around, you know, in, in this position all the time. No, you're very much moving throughout the world, but there's, you may even look exactly the same, but there's such a yeah. qualitative in your mind, difference. In your mind, you're like this all the yeah. time. It doesn't matter what the body seems to be doing. It's yeah. being done through, so... Yeah. That's the stillness, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's the true stillness, yeah. yeah. And it's part of everything that we do. Um, you know, we always encourage um, times of quiet and meditation. We have silent days. We, in, in community, we, we know the value of it. We know the value of that withdrawal mm -hmm. from activity and from the doer mm -hmm. um, to really recenter again. And, and that's, that's really one of the gifts that, that is really, it's emphasized in everything that we do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I love as well that you mentioned the mind training because it, it ties into something else I wanted to ask about Sound of Silence, but I, I kind of wanted to segue now into the inside passage. But in a way, I feel like they're so closely tied because, Jackie, you mentioned once that silence is a calling. And so one of the questions I had was, which you've already answered basically, but which was, you know, what do you do when things come up that maybe you, you can't find a way through? But if silence is a calling, then it must mean the mind is actually ready to face them in, in that kind of environment. And perhaps until that time has come, there's mind training that's offered. So it's a more practical, hands-on, um, working actively with the mind and, and, you know, with mighty companions and I don't, you can really use it anywhere, but um, to segue into this, uh, um, the inside passage, it would be things like joining on Zoom and um, going through a module, so actively taking in the teachings and, um, of course, celebratory release at the end with that beautiful cruise. And um, I was praying into this event as well and the sound of silence rings deeply in my heart because that's what I need for myself and the inside passage I was like wow that's really cool but as far as the depth of it it landed with me this morning because this is a, a course a five-month course in rethinking sickness reprogramming the mind basically releasing the beliefs that are there around that and it just hit me, actually, that my gateway into spirituality was what I believed to be like a mental illness, actually. And it came up just the other day with somebody else, one of my mighty companions, and it just struck me. I was like, oh my God, actually, this is such a gateway into the depth and into a deep, honest questioning. So... Yeah. And that is very powerful, Kristen, because we were talking earlier um, this week about this sickness takes many forms and some of those forms that are not evident physically are really as debilitating in, to whoever is experiencing them um, as something that's, that's physically apparent. Mm -hmm. You know, like, in fact, in some ways, they can almost be more difficult um, things to deal with because there's nothing visible to those around you that says you cannot be in this world in a normal way, normal way. And yet, when we come to that point of 
of wanting to know something more on a deeper level, we do feel as though we're mad in this world. We do feel as though there's something wrong with me. I don't fit. I, I can't do this anymore. Um, and the, I think these almost, we could call them gifts of some sort of discomfort in the mind and mm. the body, whether it's, um, whether it's chronic or, or whether it's something, uh, yeah, whether it's something that cannot be seen, it still is relevant for healing mm. and for mind training, mm. for all the support that it deserves, mm. that we deserve mm. from the spirit. Mm. Um, and, and really that's, that's mm. the gift we feel of this program. Mm. No, we've um, actually done in the past uh, four and six week devotional retreats where people come together in one place and live very much like we do in community, but with more teachings um, and more focus on, on their daily living. And online over this extended period of time, that's the gift that we want to bring to people in their own environment, to bring that level of focus to what's going on in my mind mm -hmm. that that i i feel this discomfort this chronic pain somewhere mm -hmm. and it can be depression it can be anxiety it it, mm -hmm. it can be a terminal illness mm -hmm. any of those yeah. things yeah and to yeah. use that um you know, a lot of times in healing, it's just a tweak in the mind. Like if you'll use that kind of mm -hmm. dis-ease, whatever, however it shows up, use it for healing. Because, uh, you know, like Rumi says, the broken heart can be a doorway to God. Pain can be a doorway if it's used. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just trying to fix the symptom. It's very deeply buried in the mind. And this program, we're going to go... To those depths and that's why we use the metaphor of or the example of the inside passage mm. it's some of the deepest canyon caverns in the world the depths of the of that uh, inside passage in Alaska and, and it feels like if you can take this uh, discomfort and you can you can say okay I've been in pain for years whether it's mental physical whatever and start to join with others in this very committed and it is a very committed mm. we have an interview it's a very committed time together and we really want everybody to be on the same page and be ready for this level of commitment to do a reversal of thinking and that's no small thing mm. and yet if you can use your pain and discomfort for healing it's actually right there ready to serve you mm and let it serve you instead of seeing it as a problem, which we don't see it as a problem. We don't see you as sick. There's a confusion in the mind. So we come together and we start to look at it deeply together with such beautiful support. We were yeah. talking yesterday about this, like mm -hmm. this is um, a level of support that we haven't offered in this particular way. Mm -hmm. And so we're very, um, we're very enthused about mm -hmm. the inspiration underneath this, the way the spirit is giving it online. And you know, if you've been joining online, how intimate it can get, it's like, there's no separation. So I just invite people to use whatever discomfort, whatever dis ease they have. And that's how we have the tagline yeah. rethinking dis ease. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that you have to have a terminal illness or anything like that. If you do welcome, but even if you just have self-hatred for the body, whatever, whatever makes you feel dis, uh, what do you call it? Dysfunctional. Dysfunctional. <laughs> Disease. <In the> world. <laughs> <laughs> Where you're not feeling at ease. Let's use it. Let's use it for healing. Let's stop this. You're worthy. Like Jackie said, you're worthy. We're all worthy of this divine connection to, to, to take ourselves from this misidentification with a body and take it higher. And take it higher. That's what that's what this is about. Yeah. So. I love what Jesus says in the course. Course in Miracles talks about the the mind is sick that thought the body could be sick. Yeah. yeah.
and that's what this is about, really, really getting in touch. Home. Yeah, really mm-hmm. taking it back into the mind that uh, sickness isn't about the body. It can't be. Mm-hmm. can't be anything out there. No mm-hmm. causative things out there, the EMFs or the, right. <laughs> or the GMOs or the any, whatever acronym you want to come up with. It's really in the mind and we're pulling it right or back. Or your there, annoying neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that other line that he talks yeah, right. he, that he says that minds are joined and bodies do not. Mm-hmm. And that's the great thing about joining virtual, isn't mm-hmm. it? So, yeah. The mind is sick, but thought the body can be sick. So we want yeah. to bring that back and the minds are joined mm-hmm. because and, the bodies can't anyway. So. And, and ultimately right. it's coming to that true um, mm. awareness of the self, what, the truth of who I am, mm. not, not this sick body. And, and so then uh, this, this progression mm. through to that deep awareness. Right, and then that's the turn back that's into the, the stillness. Yeah. Because the stillness is the forgiven mind, so, comfort, so they so are the well. same. Yeah, it's just that there's all these different ways that yeah. the spirit loves you so much can reach you in these different genres. It's like it, it, if if a three week silent, twenty one day silent retreat isn't sparking your heart, then maybe it's a five month online retreat. It's like it's so abundant, mm. and we are never here to do retreats or talk about retreats. Yeah. We don't really care about them. We care about our relationship. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, your way will be different. You will be given a relationship. This is it. Holy relationship. It's a holy relationship. Mm -hmm. And so it feels really, really beautiful Mm -hmm. to keep that in mind, like to bring your whole heart and your whole mind to whatever it is that you feel that spark. And, you know, with guidance and and trying to make decisions about should I do this or shouldn't I do that, you already know. Mm -hmm. You already know. That's the calling. It's the calling. Because it's all the calling. Yeah, it is. It's a calling to what Mm. it is that that tickles in the the Mm. heart. It's like, okay, you said um, silence seems to be a calling. Yes, it kept calling me, but I didn't get to this turn Mm. within this this true stillness without actually having that calling there all the time. And it's the call to healing. Mm. It's the call to truth. It's everybody has that calling. Everybody has that. It's just, Mm. how does it look? Mm. How does it look for me? What is it that's calling? All are called. All are (laughs) called. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, that's beautiful. There's there's two flavors here being presented amongst a multitude of other flavors, but really what I hear you saying is consistency as well. Like it's the commitment to to that call for healing, to listening and answering that call for healing that it's really what does the work actually. It's that inner pull, Jesus reeling you in. Yeah, and I just have one more thing to offer about the silent retreat, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> It's 21 days for a reason. It came in through prayer. And I didn't know this, but I I heard later that it takes 21 days to break a habit. And so it's the habit of the monkey mind. It's the habit of the habitual thinking that, that that disease, once again, it comes in. And so I just say, you know, we do offer different increments of one week, two weeks, or three weeks. But if you can do the three weeks, Mm. it is a huge gift to the universe Mm. okay so thank you oh and for the insight (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah yeah, by the way (laughs) for the inside passage maybe you can talk about the the early bird we've got an early bird special um that ends on the 7th of november so just to put that out there too yeah yeah, absolutely. And um, more information about these events can be found on our event page, livingmiracles.org forward slash events. And in both cases, as um, as they were saying, there's uh, it, like an interview process. So really, um, if you feel the tickle, it's just taking that first step and then there's support, boom, right there immediately to just guide you through this process. So, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I feel like we could talk for hours more, but we are, we're complete for now. And uh, thank you, love. Mm. Yeah, thank, thank you, everybody. You. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'll see you next week. Mm.